moment of your pain. First off, it's time to talk about your best friends in Rage 2. Well, the ones that aren't bullets. Scattered across the wasteland are what's known as arcs. Hidden, well as hidden as giant science pods can be and full of shiny new abilities and exciting weaponry, arcs are essential for becoming a murdery superhero. It's by popping your hand in one of these holes, like an old school museum exhibit, that you'll gain nanotrite abilities like shatter as you shove enemies away with an invisible force field, slam, a hulk-like ground pound that will send enemies flying like skittles, and vortex that, well, spirals foes into an insta-kill mini-twister. Fun. You'll also find special weaponry in some arcs, and the good news is that not only do you learn to use each ability or gun in a tutorial area, but there's always a chance to practice it when you get out, as a new swarm of enemies appear. Although, you won't stop practicing with the Firestorm revolver. Mmm, snap. Anyway, arcs pop up on the map as a big blue marker, and while some unlock as the story progresses, keeping an eye out is definitely more fun for your combat techniques. It's also worth noting that some arcs can only be found if you find enough intel in the world, so make sure you keep picking up data pads, but I'll get onto more about them in a minute. Next up, there's no shortage of currencies in Rage 2, but the shiny blue Feltrite that falls out of every enemy is absolutely key to levelling up. Nanotrite abilities and weaponry all need Feltrite for upgrades, so it's important to make sure that you're picking it up everywhere. It's not exactly in short supply, but there are some key ways to make sure you're maximising your Feltrite collection. First off, make sure you're up close and personal when you're taking down the Goon Squad and other nasties across the wasteland. This makes for easy collection, as Feltrite doesn't hang around long once it hits the ground. We all blame science for that, but all it means is that you need to be close enough to draw it towards you with your focus skill and not miss out. Another guaranteed way of getting lots of the blue stuff is to keep opening storage containers. Most bandit camps and other points of interest on the map will tell you that there's a certain number of these loot boxes lurking around, so make sure you keep opening them for cash and feltrite. And finally, while you'll find some hiding in walls and bizarre areas, a true jackpot haul can be pulled out of a feltrite meteor. Your ranger will mention a meteorite if he or she catches a glimpse of one in the sky, and helpfully, this then arrives on the map with a shiny blue marker. Head on over, be prepared to fight whatever or whoever also wants to get their hands on it, and focus yourself a whole lot of Feltrite. You snooze, you blues? Oh, never mind. I'm not sure what it says about mental health in the wasteland, but Rage 2 is all about self-improvement. Amongst the many upgrade screens in your menu is the Projects section. It's here that you'll find tons of perks to upgrade with the project points that you earn from doing activities in the world. These are separated out into three different characters that you help out. Combat Specialist John Marshall, the creepy Dr Kvasir, and Mayor Lusum, who's trying to keep power against the nefarious authority. Marshall's projects are all themed around your combat skills, and amongst other things, the mayor can help reduce how many craftables you need and help you find convoys across the world. And finally, Dr Kvasir is the one to upgrade quickly if you want to be able to track Feltrite and other items. While combat is obviously important and you can personalise your upgrades exactly to the way you want to fight, Kvasir's data pad and storage container radar come in seriously handy for looting areas completely. It's also important to note that while each of the three characters dish out points, you don't need to spend them on their own section, and you can invest across all of the different projects. Check in on the menu often and make sure you're spending, as these upgrades make a huge difference. Impressive. You think I can catch a bullet too? It's just not enough to be able to shatter a foe and send them spinning away. You want to be able to dissolve them if you're close enough, don't you? Well, the good news is that all of your nanotrite abilities and weaponry can be further upgraded with feltrite and additional perks. Keep an eye out for nanotrite boosters in the world, which you'll find in arc chests or from vendors, and you can add extra perks to your already deadly abilities. While you use feltrite to unlock the level of each ability, head into the perks section and you can make things even better, reduce cooldowns and increase range. To make sure you're as resistant as you can be in battle, head to the constitution slot, where you'll find bullet reduction levels and ways to spend nanotrite boosters on additional shields and protection. Yes, these always come in handy. 
When it comes to your guns, your weapons menu is exactly the same. You can upgrade your arsenal with Feltrite, but you'll also need Weapon Core mods to equip abilities, increase reload speeds, and improve your magazine capacity. Again, you'll find these in arc chests across the wasteland or from vendors happy to exchange your precious cash for even more killables. Oh, and definitely boost the shotgun as early as possible to shoot armor off well-protected enemies. You'll thank me. When it comes to the glorious art of ending enemies, it's important to remember that speed matters in Rage 2. The faster you kill your foes, the faster your overdrive meter will fill, and you'll get to try the alternate fire modes on all of those ridiculous guns. You definitely don't want to miss this on the Firestorm revolver. Anyway, the important thing to remember here then is to make sure that you're using your abilities to the benefit of overdrive. This means constantly juggling your superpowers, making the most of a slam here or a shatter there, or just making sure that you use dash to get closer to your foes and dodge some rocket fire at the same time. Firefights get very messy very quickly, but there's nothing like launching into a brawl that looks like there's no way to win, but using every superpower at your disposal to make literal mincemeat of your enemies. It's also key to remember your focus ability, so that you're always aware where your enemies are. With that grasp of your left hand, you can see your foes marked out in purple, and while they don't stay labelled up, it's good enough to know where those last few goons are hiding, so that you know if you should use your overdrive to take them out, or just a casual use of a shotgun. Either way, it's up to you. Ooh, ouch. If it wasn't already clear enough, Rage 2 is as much a game about picking things up as it is about detonating the noggins of enemies or throwing mutant dogs into the air. The wasteland is positively littered with stuff. Data pads are everywhere and vitally important for unlocking new activities on the map and finding intel on arcs you might have missed. Invest in Kvasir's project perk early and what looks like your own private Wi-Fi signal will light up pink when you're right on top of the data pad. Keep an eye on the tracker and you'll thank yourself later as you unlock even more murder tools. Now, it's time not to underestimate the power of junk. Amongst other collectibles, like explosive components for crafting, you'll find endless amounts of junk to collect. It might seem time-consuming to smash every crate and pick up everything, but get back to a vendor and junk feels like money for literally nothing and means you can invest in important new tools like health infusion schematics to upgrade your medication. It's also important to note that you can augment yourself further by heading to the Cyber Dock in Wellspring in the north of the map. Collect enough augmentation parts by taking down high-level bosses across the world, and you can improve your health and weapons by a small percentage. You can even reset your nanotrite abilities, for a fee of course. And finally, when it comes to picking things up, don't forget Mutant Spore. It sounds nice and juicy as you collect it, but that's not its only benefit. Take these squishy parts to the Mutant Bash TV gift shop and you can exchange it for Mutant Bash TV coins that can then be used to buy weapon skins. Of course, you could sell Mutant Spore for cash at Bloody Mary's and Wellspring, but it's fun to turn all of that gore in your pocket into something, well, pretty. And finally, last but not least, it's time to talk vehicles. The wasteland is huge, and you need a reliable way of getting across the map as fast as possible. Thankfully, your handy Phoenix vehicle is more than up to the task, but if you want to take part in convoy battles, you're going to want to level up your own private tank if you don't want to go down in flames. Auto parts are essential for upgrades in the garage menu, and you can buy these from vendors or get five every time you bring a new vehicle in from the outside world. Drive your new acquisition to a town across the wasteland and it will unlock in your own garage of chaos. As you progress through the campaign, you'll also find the Icarus, your own private ticket to the skies over the wasteland. Even if you can't take part in convoy combat, there's no better way to see the world of Rage 2. Take to the air, take in the view, and it makes a nice break from the land carnage. Not that you'll be able to resist being away from it for long. So that's the seven things we wish we knew before playing Rage 2. Let us know if you have any bonus tips in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that notification bell so that you know when our next video lands. Wow.
like and share if you enjoy the video and think others might benefit from this. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.